Good morning, friends. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, picking up in verse 14 and goes through verse 21. And it reads, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power of His Spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power that works within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask for or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our welcome back to Crossroads on Broadway. And this is the final week. And it might be my favorite show. I don't know if you're ranking them Matilda. Maybe it's because I grow up reading Roald Dahl books and my favorite book growing up was James and the Giant Peach and the BFG and, and all of those one and Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, all those wonderful stories. And Matilda was this was the show about a little girl with so much potential who kind of perseveres in life to get to a certain point. Again, if you haven't seen the movie, and I hope that you have, it's worth seeing. Danny DeVito's in the one uh, on TV that you can see. It's funny. It's a great movie you can sit around the family with. But this show got me thinking about my own kids, of course, but I'm biased. I have four of them, so they're always on my mind. And our lectionary reading this week came from the book of Ephesians in chapter 3 and 14, and it came up with this prayer. And it's a prayer that most scholars, when they look at the book of Ephesians, think probably would have shown up after a baptism. It seems that the book has some kind of lit liturgies uh, within it that were written probably for the very early church that you would uh, uh, read or say during a baptism. And when I was hit and given this reading this week, uh, what made me think and sort of put the show Matilda together in this reading was that this prayer here in chapter 3 is a prayer that I probably now will forever pray over my children before they go to bed at night. Now listen to these words. And so in order for this message to hopefully make sense for you and why that's the case, I want to take you through these verses. Because think about all of the things that you hope and you dream for, for your kids. And I don't care if your kids are three, four, you know, and young like mine, or maybe uh, you're older and you have grandkids or great-grandkids and you're the parent of adult children. I'm telling you that this is a universal prayer that you can pray over your children and in hoping that the benefits of this prayer then could take root in their lives. Listen to these words in verse 314. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, which is a simple thing. And that when you come to your children, like when I, the sacred moment of kissing my children goodnight before they go to sleep, it is this almost reverence to what God has given me in the life that uh, God has graced me with. Uh, and for our family is four <laughs> lives. It's a time to take and pause and give reverence for the prayer that springs from the sense of wonder and adoration for what God has blessed me with, these four boys, these living, breathing things. And... How about this? The fact that God is already at work in their life. That as young as they are, even if you have a baby at home, that God is already there and in present and in working in that child's life. That should bring a sense of wonder and perhaps a bended knee. The prayer continues in verse 15, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Now, an important note for the translation in this point is that this verse is indicating the fact that the patria, which is the Greek word, or patria, as we sing the glory of patri, is a link to the word pater, or father, as if to say, from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. Now, the common English version is going to talk about how every ethnic group on earth takes its name from one God. And when I read this verse, what makes me think of it is that perhaps my kids would know God's love through me. Or if you're a single mother at home, that they would know God's love through you because we are these family units or these ethnic group units or you know, these communities, our church, takes its name and its fullest meaning from God. 
And there's an inherent responsibility in praying that and that you are the mediator of that grace to that child that they may know God's love with the way that you deal with them and talk to them and nurture them and have them grow. In 3.16 it says, I pray that according to the riches of His glory that He may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being, your heart, with the power of His Holy Spirit. A simple thing that I think that we would want all of our kids to know, of all the things we want them to be strong, to face down the challenges of every day, for them to be strengthened within their inner beings, that their hearts would be able to persevere through the hardships that we know come in life. And I'd love to sit here as a pastor and say that just because I'm a pastor or, or a Christian or because sometimes you might do the right things that you would think that nothing bad's ever going to happen to your kids and nothing bad's going to happen to your family. We know that's just not the case. We know that our children and the people that we pass all this down to are going to endure hardship. So to pray that according to the riches of His glory, and we know that those things are there, that He may grant that they may be strengthened in their inner beings, that their hearts would be strong to be able to take them through those challenges in life that we know are coming. Now, how about this one? And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. See here, Paul is talking about how it's the quality of the heart which determines the quality of the life. And isn't that what the church is here to do? to help nurture the hearts, as we say, healthy homes and holy hearts, and so that all people's hearts may be rooted and grounded in love. And this is a consequence of Christ and the Holy Spirit indwelling within their life. So we pray that His riches and glories may strengthen their hearts and that their hearts may determine the quality of life or how rooted they are in the name of love. Now that's a powerful and beautiful thing. Because we all know that throughout the course of our life, there are so many things that try to root us in other places. As I've had to tell myself this week, and it's been a frustrating week for one reason or another, uh, with a lot and great many things, as we prayed in our free store before it opened one time this week, let us not practice negativity. Let us not practice narcissism. Let us not practice and root ourselves in those things, but instead Focus on love. And what a prayer for your kids. That Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith, that they may be rooted and grounded in love. Now how about this next one? In 3.18 it says, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. See, it is as love for others takes control of our lives that we are enabled to sense the reality of the love of Christ. As we grow, we begin to learn what love is. And children know this. But I think we see as our families maybe get bigger, as we encounter more people, or maybe you serve more people, you find that your hearts are very open to open it up. And the best way for me to describe this is, you know, we have four kids now, but I think if you would have asked me after child number one, I would have been like, well, I don't think I could possibly love another child. Well, I don't have room for this. But the next child's born, and then you kind of just go, oh, wow, your world gets bigger. And you think the same things. You know, how much more do I have to give? How much more do I have to feel? Third child's born and you go, oh, it's bigger. And as many of you know, uh, we took on a foster child. And then there was a lot of conversations around the time. I remember going home and I remember telling Aaron, I uh, gathered around the table and I said, all right, everybody listen up, family meeting. And Aaron looked me straight in the face. She said, hey, no more chickens. I said, no, 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 it's not a chicken. She said, all right, then no more dogs. I said, not a dog, not a dog. It's a baby. Now, what was interesting was of my two boys who could comprehend this conversation, they immediately threw their hands up and enjoy, right? Because their hearts were already there. But in seeing their faces, we kind of said, okay. And there is a scene in Matilda where uh, she really wants to be adopted by this other family. And when we decided to take on our uh, uh, foster son uh, in December, 
Uh, we had thought maybe early on that we would lose him because we were not foster parents certified. But I would tell you that social services ended up coming to us and asking us to hold on to him because they don't have enough foster parents. And so I'm pausing my prayer here. If only in this moment that this message might reach somebody who's thinking about this, who's thinking about being someone who's ready to open their hearts up, or maybe you're sitting there not sure if your heart's long enough, or if you, if you have so many other kids or people or you know, things in your life where you don't feel like you can pack one more thing in there, you don't have enough love to give. The truth is, you do. You do. For it is as love for others takes control of our lives that we are enabled to sense the reality of the love of Christ. When that new life enters your life, you begin to learn that you know nothing about love. The author of love himself may, but us and our finite beings, insofar as we advance in love, we will grow sure and sure of the reality of God as folks grow in love. And what a thing to pray over our kids. So if you're sitting there thinking that maybe this is something you can do, I'm, I want to be in prayer for you and hope that maybe you can take that next step to be a foster parent or to be a respite caregiver or to be a kinship giver. And if that's something that you're interested in, I would love to link you in with any of those services or link in with people who've had different experiences than we have so that you can continue the discernment of whether or not you'd want to take another life into your family because we need foster parents in our communities. See, the presence of love for others in the heart is that which makes it possible to have the power to comprehend the love of Christ. And I think one of these verses are saying, what this prayer is kind of giving us, that is that is in the love for others takes control of our lives. We are enabled to sense the reality of the love of Christ. We learn to love in doing. We learn to love in loving. This is why we don't, shouldn't practice negativity. So we pray these things over our children. We are asking that this love take root so that over the course of their life, they can learn to grow and be enriched with this idea of the breadth and knowledge and height and depth of love. Not a beautiful thing. 319 reads, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And see, even when we sense, we realize that this love is boundless, surpassing our knowledge, because it's something that we cannot yet comprehend. It's something that we continue to learn over the course of our life. Like I just said, we learn to love in loving, and, but knowledge when we think about it as something that we just need to think about, knowledge tends to puff us up, but love builds us up. The Greek here indicates that we are filled to all the fullness of God, as if to say that the desire that we would not just have some of the gifts of God, but that, we would, that those children that we are praying this prayer over would have all of the gifts that God intends them to have. And if the verses in the prayer before this are any indication, those gifts include the inward strength of God's Spirit, Christ dwelling within their heart, creating an enduring sense of love for others, and a sense of reality and complete adequacy of Christ's love for them. And on these three unshakable principles, all of the things that they all have thrown at them in their life, Perhaps being rooted in these things will help see them through the storm. And this prayer ends with a doxology. Fancy word in church that we sing, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow, which just simply means to give praise and glory. And it ends in 3.20 and 21. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ever ask or imagine. Now, as you pray that doxology over your children, you are praying the reality that God wants more for your children than perhaps even you do. And that the fullness and love of God is something beyond our comprehension and understanding, but God has those boundless limits, surpassing our knowledge, to, and He wants to give our children all of the gifts that God wants and intends for their life. And that God and in Jesus Christ and His Spirit and in them learning to grow in love is going to be able to accomplish more in their lives than any kind of preparation that we could give them. 
This doxology is a praise for God's victory in the lives of our children. It's also a prayer for God's victories in the for God's future victories in their lives and that he would have many, many, many more in their lives. The prayer simply ends to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. A simple prayer. A simple prayer that when I hit me this and, and, and with the combination of the show and in thinking about my kids, I said, boy, what a verse to take to our kids. What a verse to sit and put your children's names on. Ephesians 3, 14 and pray for these things. And so, friends, as I close this message this morning, I just want to invite us to pray that prayer. Pray that prayer for the children in your life. And I said, I don't care how old they are. They don't need to be young like mine. And if you don't have any kids, pray for the kids that are in your faith community, the ones in our church, or perhaps even better, the ones we know are going to be here in this classroom. This classroom is our new children's space at our Harmont location because it was important for us to have a place where children could come and grow and be rooted in the boundless knowledge of God's love. So that they would grow in their inward strength and the gifts of the Spirit could nurture within them and that Christ dwelling within their hearts could create enduring love for others and create the sense of reality of the complete adequacy of the love of Christ Jesus for every child that comes into this market and in this Crossroads Harmont location. So pray for them. So friends, I invite you to pray with me now for those children in your life so that God may continue to boundlessly work in love in their lives. Friends, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with knees bowed before you. From whom every family on earth and in heaven takes its name, we pray that according to your riches and glory that you may grant that our children be strengthened in their inner being with the power of your Spirit. And that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith as they are seeking to be rooted and grounded in love. We pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth. Teach them to know the love of Christ that surpasses their knowledge so that they may be filled with all of the fullness of God. To have every good gift that you have prepared for their lives. And now to him, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish these and abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. To him be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations. And let us pray the prayer your son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May it be so, friends. And we'll see you next week.